Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. A damning new investigation has labelled the state's emergency departments as inefficient, ineffective and putting patients' lives in danger. The Auditor-General scathing report today calling for urgent action and whole-of-hospital reforms to address the barriers facing the embattled health sector. Tasmania's hospitals severely and routinely compromising patient safety once every four days. That's according to a damning new investigation into our emergency departments. The average wait time for patients waiting to be admitted into the wards is approximately nine and a half hours uh, and that has increased over the last nine years. Our finding was that it is in fact putting patients at risk. The Auditor-General report finding the Royal Hobart Hospital is suffering from bed block 93% of the time. The Launceston General Hospital more than 70%. There is a large number of patients that are waiting for admission to hospital wards. Uh, they can't get access to those hospital wards. That's creating overcrowding within the emergency department which is contributing to the ramping problem. Finding ambulance ramping was occurring alarmingly more than it should be. And in the past three years, the rates of adverse events in EDs rose by 60%. Even more concerning, the nursing union revealing in the past three months alone, there's been four incidents of patients attempting to take their own life while waiting for treatment. Patients are needing to sit in the emergency departments for three to four days, even sometimes up to a week before they're actually able to get a, board, a bed on a ward calling for an urgent overhaul in hospital leadership. These are cultural changes that can be fixed with very little resourcing. Clearly uh, it points to a failure of leadership. We've got additional funding that we can now use, uh, but I'll be looking for the advice of experts, including the Auditor General's advice, which will assist us in finding even more solutions so we can do more. Meanwhile, Labor has handed down its response to last week's state budget, saying if in government it would appoint a mental health worker in every state school. Also, it would make TAFE free for those studying in areas of critical demand. The pilot program will run for one year and allow two intake courses for identified and consultation with industry that meet critical skills gaps. The Greens will hand down their alternative budget tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Police are urging the Tasmanian public to help them crack down on illegal behaviour as Crime Stoppers Week is launched for another year. In 2019, the campaign is asking the community to play its part in the recovery of stolen goods and reporting deliberately lit fires. While there's also a focus on stopping the flow of illicit drugs into the state, particularly the drug ICE. ICE is a particularly nasty drug that impacts very significantly on individuals and families and the whole community. So we do everything that we can working with the community and with, uh, with Crime Stoppers. Reports to Crime Stoppers can be made anonymously online or by calling 1800 333 000. Mona is continuing to spread its wings around Tasmania with Dark Lab today launching a new project in the Huon Valley. Project X will see tourists walk through Hastings Cave Reserve as part of the 12-month multi-event initiative to draw more people to the fire-ravaged area. A pristine Tasmanian environment doubling as a dark lab installation. When Dark Mofo kicks off, so too does Project X. One of those events will see buses leave from Hobart, taking guests to the forests at Hastings Caves. They'll then sit, sit in the forest uh, at dusk as the sun goes down and uh, experience the work. The work on site for three months is designed to reconnect people with nature and without giving too much away will include an installation of the sounds of 2,000 ravens. They have a remarkable acoustic, they have a musical quality, your forests. And spending time in those places is very important. It's not just some artistic whim. It's created by Chris Watson, an award-winning English sound recordist and musician. It's also a cathartic experience that we all need, you know, that people are genuinely inspired by going into those environments. Dark Lab spent weeks tracking the artist down, finally finding him in Iceland. It responds to the forest, it's situated in the forest, something that uh, the Huon Valley is known for. 
So we pulled out all stops to get him here. The work is part of a wider project under the banner Project X, a 12-month long public art program in the Huon Valley. It's assisted by $2 million worth of state and federal government funding to help boost visitation to the area. It's aimed to support the fire-ravaged community as it rebuilds from summer's devastating bushfires, hoping to attract the same amount of people as the currently closed Tahoon Airwalk did each year. There's so many opportunities to actually create new itineraries in the, in the Huon Valley and promote everything that we have. More projects will be announced in the near future. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. As we enter flu season, health authorities are urging Tasmanians at risk of developing pneumonia to be vaccinated. It follows a new report today revealing an increase in older Australians dying from the bacterial infection. One Launceston doctor says the situation is worse than he thought. For this Tasmanian, the simple act of breathing can be a struggle. <gasps> Annie Gregg has battled with bouts of pneumonia for nearly 25 years. I'd take antibiotics, get better, go back to work, get sick again, take time off, take more antibiotics. And she says it severely impacted her life as a dancer. Not able to do lots of things and I was a very active person throughout most of my life and so it really does slow you down. The Lung Foundation today revealing one in ten Australians over the age of 65 die from the deadly chest infection when hospitalised. I have to confess it's worse than I thought myself from just you know my own sort of uh, practice and awareness. The more unwell somebody is you, you sort of know when they first come that uh, that they are more likely to be a statistic. Authorities now urging those over 65 years of age, Indigenous Australians over 50 and anyone living with a chronic illness to protect themselves from the bacterial infection. A lot of pneumonias we can't prevent, but this one, pneumococcal pneumonia, which is the most common bacterial pneumonia, we can prevent with a vaccination. Now at 65 years old, prevention is vital for Annie, who was subsequently diagnosed with a terminal lung disease in 2007. But with her vaccination, she's managed to avoid pneumonia for over 10 years. It would be quite a serious thing if I did end up with, you know, a serious lung infection because I would be completely compromised. So, yeah, it, it really helped a lot. Annie is now on the active list for a lung transplant. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The Australian Red Cross Blood Service is crying out for additional donors this flu season. Currently, around 1,400 people a day are cancelling their appointments after being affected by illness. Over the next 14 days, across Australia, almost 6,000 additional blood donations will be needed. So we're seeing so many cancellations, around 40% rise in cancellations, which is really unusual and it is the highest number of cancellations we've seen since March 2017. The main reason donors are cancelling is due to an early onset of the cold and flu season. In Tasmania alone, an additional 500 donors are needed now. It's really important for people to remember that actually one in three of us will need blood products in our lifetime, but only one in 30 of us donate. At the age of 79, Gay Groom has been donating blood regularly for more than 60 years. I probably gave actually in my teens because I was a nurse and I've been giving blood ever since, on and off. And she's joined by others across the state, happy to routinely stop by their closest centre to pay it forward. Well, mine's A positive, so and that's 30% of the population, so you know it's going to help someone. Yeah, you always get a text to say that you've helped out a few people, so it's good. You might be surprised to learn that the time it takes to donate blood is actually less than 10 minutes, meaning it can easily be done on your lunch break. There's so many ways you can register as a donor now. You can go to donateblood.com.au, you can just pick up the phone and call 131495, or we now also have the Donate Blood app as well, which you can just download onto your phone, register and make your first appointment. Jessie Gilmore, 7 Tasmania News. 
Some of the state's brightest ballroom stars are preparing to face hundreds of interstate and global competitors at the annual Dance Sport Championships. In its ninth year in Launceston, the stage will feature dancers ranging from 4 to 84 years of age in one of the country's leading ballroom competitions. So we were really lucky because the community really gets behind us, gets behind this beautiful art form and yeah, we, we give back and we do our very best to make people feel really welcome. The Silver Dome will come alive with all the glitz and glamour on August 10. A new Tasmanian cafe has become the first in the state to cater for those who are deaf or living with a hearing impairment. Auslan Cafe in Battery Point launched this morning with its aim to raise awareness of Auslan speakers and create more inclusion for all members of our community. It looks and sounds like any other busy cafe, but look a little bit closer and there's something special about this Battery Point business. We wanted to show the general community sign language and give them a little bit of education around that. Opening to the public today, Auslan Cafe is catering to all, ensuring there's no barriers. Aside from Jane, all staff here are deaf or hard of hearing, with Auslan as their first language. It's about inclusion um, for everybody. Deaf and hearing impaired can come and socialise and uh, the mainstream community can come along and, and enjoy great coffee and, uh, and learn something at the same time. The cafe is Jane and Rachel's brainchild, a dream of inclusion finally coming to reality. Normally what happens with a deaf person when they go into, or an Auslan user, they go into a cafe or a shop and they've got to sit there and figure out how am I going to communicate with this person and they've got lots of different ways to do that. Here in this cafe it flips the opposite way around. They are just another member of society, they just communicate differently so yeah. Rachel's uncle is here from South Australia. He says he's proud to watch the business take off. It's a wonderful idea and we've Facebooked the hell out of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, we wish them all the success. And as the only specialist cafe like this in Tasmania, its owners are hoping to spread a vital message in our phone-dominated world. Most of us are down on our phones or doing these things. Auslan, you can't do that. You need to actually look someone in the eye and you have a real conversation. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. The fundraising drive for Give Me Five for Kids has officially kicked off at a breakfast in Hobart this morning. The organisation donates money raised during June to Tasmanian hospitals to buy life-saving equipment for sick children. The first major event, the Wheelie Bin Drive, will be held next Thursday on Hobart's eastern shore. Tasmania now has another one of its own in the AFL system with Bernie product. Ryan Gardner picked up by the Western Bulldogs in the mid-season draft. While well, some of the state's other best young footballers are preparing to put pride on the line in the Devils' under-25 representative match. This was Gardner back in 2015 after being taken by Geelong at pick 59. I thought my best hope was with St Kilda and um, their last pick went as well by the time that my name was called out. So. Yeah, but to see um, Geelong, you know, select me, it was, yeah, something that I'll never forget. But things didn't quite pan out, with Gardner not playing a single senior game during his three years on the Cats list. The towering defender's patience and hard work eventually paying off, however, taken by the Western Bulldogs at pick six in last night's mid-season draft, following an impressive season with the club's VFL side. It was a great feeling when I first got there, and um, now that I'm here, I'm, I'm stoked to be given the second opportunity, so hopefully... Uh, Hopefully something comes of it and um, yeah, just got to work hard and hopefully get my opportunity. Um, there's still so much to learn and um, I'm only young so it's just going to be learning off um, all these new guys and um, I just can't wait. Meantime, some of the TSL's best have been rewarded for standout seasons, named as part of the Tasmania Devils side to take on Victoria Metro in the June 9 under-25 representative match at Utah Stadium. Lauderdale, Glenorchy and North Launceston are boasting 23 players out of the 30-man squad. Really, we're focused on what we can do in terms of the side that we put on the park and, and hopefully we're able to, to play to our strengths. And uh, we believe with the squad that we've named and, and the final team of 23 will be really competitive. Following the shock departure of coach Greg Calvert after a string of poor results, the Kingborough Lions have announced the man to lead them forward with former University and Launceston City coach Jez Kent signing on for the rest of the year along with the 2020 and 2021 NPL seasons. Getting the mentality, the attitude on the park right, um, 
pushing my philosophy to the players. Hopefully they will pick that up. The Lions currently sit in sixth spot on the NPL ladder with just three wins from 11 matches. And finally, in hockey, Diamondbacks will be out to provide the upset win and steal second spot from OHA on the competition ladder when the sides meet this weekend in what's expected to be one of the games of the season. They've got a really strong um, midfield as well, Billy Bridley, who's been putting a lot of goals in the net, so she'll be looking to put in a few more this weekend and run and muck through midfield, so hopefully we can control her. Everyone's um, playing really, really well as a team. We're all doing our individual role really good and OHA obviously a very talented team but hopefully we can put it together on the weekend and get the win. Derwent remains the side to beat this season sitting undefeated on top of the table. 11 degrees today in Hobart, Launceston 13, Burnie reached the top of 12 with 13 degrees also in Devonport. 14 was the state's top for the Bass Strait Islands, 13 for Lowhead, Fingal and St Helens. 12 degrees at Cressy, Smithton and Wynyard. Scottsdale, Campania and Strawn all 11. Lyweny reached 4 and for those more adventurous the top of Mount Wellington was minus 1 today. Looking on the charts, mid to low cloud over Tasmania. Similar conditions in Victoria, New South Wales and parts of South Australia. Patchy high cloud streams over WA with cumulus activity over the top end and mostly clear elsewhere. Tomorrow several troughs cross the state and Victoria throughout the day. A cold front moves over New South Wales while a high creeps towards the bite and a trough situated over the northern Queensland. Westerly winds 15 to 25 knots, grading 20 to 30 about the north, reaching 35 early on. Shifting south to southwesterly 20 to 30 knots early with seas between 2 and 3 metres mostly higher through the north. A gale warning for northern coastal waters. There's a strong wind warning for all remaining waters and a small craft wind alert for the central lakes. There's also a frost warning for the central north, the Midlands and the east coast tomorrow and a sheep grazes warning for the southeast King and Ferno Islands as well as a bushwalkers alert for the western and central parts. Showers for the south tomorrow. Hobart 10 degrees, 9 at Jeeves and 8 for Bothwell. 12 in Launceston and Devonport. 10 for Cressy, morning frost there. 11 in Burnie, showers for Strawn, 10 degrees, 12 in showers for Curry, with 13 in St Helens, 12 for Swansea, 11 in showers for Orford. Showers about the west, the south and also the Bass Strait Islands on Thursday, fine elsewhere, mainly fine on Friday. Some showers though through the west, the south and central parts, with a fine day on Saturday, just some drizzle through the west and the south. Looking around Australia tomorrow at your major centres, 25 and sunny in Perth, 14 in Adelaide, showers for Melbourne 12 degrees with 21 in Sydney, 23 and sunny in Brisbane. And at the moment it's 7 degrees in Hobart, 8 degrees for Launceston and Devonport. That's all from me, Jo. That's all from the team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We will of course see you throughout the evening with updates. Bye for now.